Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss about empathy in psychiatry. I am Dr. Suresh Padadmat, Professor of Psychiatry, Head of Telemedicine Center, Head of Forensic Psychiatry Unit working at Nimans, Bangalore. Today we are going to discuss about empathy, how to understand the concept of empathy, how to learn the skills of empathy and this is a very important video you should know if you are a mental health professional. Empathy is an engine for your interview skills. Otherwise, it's an interview or an interrogation. Not only for psychiatrists, it is very essential for any medical professional to know about empathy. Empathy in psychiatry. See, empathy means it is the ability to sense other people's emotion coupled with ability to imagine what someone else might be thinking or feeling. It's not only understanding their situation, understanding their thought process, you're understanding their feelings, experiences, what led to that and how is he feeling? You will also feel the same. That is basically ability to stand in someone else's shoes. So that is empathy. That means you are not just understanding the person, you are understanding the complete, comprehensively, holistically, his feelings, emotions, thoughts and his behavior in a particular situation and you feel it. That is called as empathy. It's very difficult to learn. But if you learn it, it's very easy, the patient, very easy to build the rapport with the patient. Not only that, and you also should learn the empathy skills. That means you have to communicate to the patient, I have understood you. So what are those skills? That is called as empathy skills. Let me be very clear. No book, no video can teach you warmth, courtesy, compassion and empathy. It is learning by doing. You need to see your seniors. How do they empathize? What are the skills they use? And try it and do it yourself. Both verbal and non-verbal skills are very essential for empathy. To whom are this video is very essential? To any doctors, psychiatrists, and also the doctors who are undergoing psychiatric training, any registered medical practitioner, psychologist, social worker, nurses, any healthcare worker, rehabilitation worker, and counselors. For all these people who are in the mental health professional or medical professional need to know about empathy. Without empathy, any kind of interview skills is useless. It is almost like a police doing the interrogation. So please learn about empathy. Time required. Depending upon the purpose and depending upon the patient's illness related factor, the time may last from 5 to Maybe one hour, two hour. For example, if the patient is suicidal, going through a very difficult time and it's a crisis moment, you may have to be with the patient until the help arrives. Because empathy is not just knowing about the person, not only feeling about the person, you should be able to take one step forward to help them. Not only that, empathy skills depends upon how what is your experience and professional skills. So the time required is very difficult to say when you are empathizing with the patient. Purpose of empathy is basically to understand the emotional state of the patient, building rapport, getting to know deeper thoughts of the patient and empathy is very helping process. That means it is a healing process. Through empathizing you heal the patient's problems. If you are able to empathize, the patient feels that I am able to discuss my innermost conflict with the doctor and he is able to give solution or he may heal himself by ventilating his emotions or ventilating his problems. The first and the foremost for the empathy skills, diffusing the strangers is very essential. That means if the patient has come to the OPD, he is coming to a new strange place. So you should learn to diffuse the situation so that the patient talks about his inner feelings which are very personal to him or personal to her and he should share to a stranger, maybe a psychiatrist, maybe a mental health professional, he would have not met you. How can he trust you? So this strangeness has to be removed. Greet the patient, introduce yourself, introduce if there are somebody else in the room, talk to him first casually about the demographic details, educate the nature of the interview. 
discuss that you are to tell me you may have to tell that i'm going to discuss your problems with my senior colleagues if you are a junior most consultant or a junior most uh, a trainee you have to tell that confidentiality has to be discussed and limitation of confidentiality has to be explained and be very clear you have to say that that we are we are not going to judge you we are non-judgmental you can talk about freely about your thoughts about your emotions about your experiences we are here to understand and help you that should be communicated clearly and also you may have to say you are free to refuse answer uncomfortable questions and please to take consent verbally and you should offer the seat and say are you comfortable this simple things will diffuse the strangeness and the patient will start talking to you with their problems normalization of the situation is very essential any time patient feels that his thoughts his emotions are very strange he is going crazy and i am alone in this world this kind of feeling will be there so you should learn to normalize the situation you may have to say in a such a stressful situation for example the patient has lost the job you may have to say in such a stressful situation i have seen many people drinking or consuming drugs is the same thing happening in your life the patient feels that you have normalized that means without his knowledge you have said i have seen i have seen many people like this that means you are not alone that you have communicated and you have normalized it and the patient will outrightly say it's going it's happening in my life i'm using drugs or alcohol you may say sometimes you may also have to say i've seen many patients in a such a scenario the way you are going through in your life they think of hurting themselves they are becoming suicidal the patient say yes i am getting these thoughts very often that means the normalization of the situation is very essential you may also have to say i have seen ocd patients getting sexual thoughts repeatedly and it's very common the patient suddenly say yes i am getting such thoughts i thought i am the only one and he will start discussing his problems and sometimes you may have seen in extreme anxiety people start going to work yes sir this happens i can't go out of the house so normalization of the situation is very essential so that the patient discloses his inner thoughts and feelings but however please do remember never ever normalize illegal act never ever say that okay it is good to hit people yes you did the right thing by hitting somebody don't tell that never normalize such situations let's discuss about attributes of empathy teresa weisman has clearly talked about four important attributes first one is able to see the world as others see it the world is not only according to your view please do remember the patient and the patient family member have a different view learn to understand that you may have a medical model of illness the patient and the family members may have a different model they may say it is because of religious or maybe because of devil so learn to understand the other view that is very essential you should know being non judgmental it's very essential empathy will teach you the patient may have a different opinion about a religion maybe about a political party regarding food habits culture so being non judgmental is very essential understanding of, of others people's feeling is very essential so that empathy will teach you able to communicate that you that you have understood the patient problem not only the problem but also his feeling that is what the attributes of empathy that is understanding yourself understanding the other feelings understanding and what circumstances he is going through and you are able to communicate i have understood comprehensively about his problem his situation his feeling and his experience these are all four important attributes of empathy it's nothing but emotional quotient you can call it as there are three different types of empathy cognitive empathy emotional empathy and compassionate empathy these are the three important empathy you should learn cognitive empathy is simply knowing how the other people feels and thinks it is i would rather say it's most probably almost near to sympathy it is just by thought process you know that they are going through a difficult situation the person is sad but you are not feeling anything for them that is cognitive empathy emotional empathy is knowing the other person's feel and his thoughts but you also feel the same and feel with them that is feeling in unison you, the patient is feeling very sad that he has lost his parents in the accident you also feel sad for him 
that is emotional empathy the third one is compassionate empathy knowing how the other person feels thinks and you also feel the same and also you think about the way he is thinking and you are spontaneously moved to help him for example if the patient says i lost the job the past month and i have exhausted all money since past two days i am unable to eat food or else i don't have money to eat food and he says i am literally hungry since two days in such a scenario you may arrange coupons from your canteen that is called as compassionate empathy that means you are not only understood his situation his feelings his frustration you are moved to help him that is called as compassionate empathy or else you are so moved because of his problem you would like to help him by connecting to some ngos or from social welfare measures so that is compassionate empathy so empathy has two important things you should learn verbal skills and non verbal skills what are the verbal skills let's take the scenario the patient has lost his job or her job you need to have empathy statements you must have felt terrible when you lost the job can you tell me about the feelings when you felt when you lost the job how did you feel so that is empathy statement else is it terrible when you lost the job it looks that the whole world collapsed in front of you because you had loan mortgage what do you feel at that time that's one is empathy statement or else a phrasing the patient said i lost my job i felt like killing myself immediately this is a window of opportunity to ask and also dig deeper into his emotion because he is very very guarded he said i want to just felt like killing but he did not express his emotion he expressed his only behavior in such a scenario you should say okay what i heard is you said that you lost your job you felt sad you felt like killing yourself did i heard right can you explain more about it can you tell what you felt at that time so that will give an opportunity to describe his emotion that is paraphrasing and doing the interrogation regarding his emotions what he felt how he felt at that moment that means you are not only talking about the behavior because very often mental health professional does not talk only about behavior you talk about their thoughts about their feeling their experiences what they went through that situation how traumatic was the situation how traumatic they experienced the situation and how they felt at that situation that is what is this paraphrasing and empathy statements help you to dig deeper and know about the person sometimes the patient may be completely bland or they may not express direct questioning about the emotion is very essential you may say how did you feel when you lost the job this may look very rude which is like a journalist they do when a person has died you may ask how are you feeling so it's not like that you have to have that empathy skill and you have to say in a depressed kind of gesture okay you lost job what did you feel at the time so that should be the way of putting across sometimes you may reflect the statement the patient looks very sad and you may sound you may you, you should put it like this you you sound distressed when you said this so that will give an opportunity to explain so these are all the statements paraphrasing reflecting and inquiring about the emotions is very essential to know about and to understand his emotions when the patient feels that you have understood his problem is at the one level if you are able to understand his emotion it is a second level third is you are trying to help him that is the compassionate empathy that's where the stronger relationship is built between the doctor and the patient that is doctor patient relationship is very strong and this will start healing the process that means it's set in motion the patient will start healing sometimes you have to wait for the opportunity whenever the patient talks about highly emotionally loaded words or adjectives he was using or difficult situation is describing immediately you may have to stop and ask about what did he feel at that time what was the thought process going at that time if he says that my parent died on that day i was not there at that time when he is giving that kind of facial expression body language you may have to think it or think it twice and say okay you said that your parent died on that day 
you were not able to come what did you feel at that time what were the thought process going in that time what were the emotions you are feeling and sometimes you may have to validate the emotion and you may have to say if any person in your situation when they have lost the job may would have felt the same thing so validating their emotion is very essential especially in disaster when the patient says or the person says during disaster the during the earthquake everything fell down and he hit my father and he died i could not help him and he may have a severe guilt that i escaped from that place during that time validating emotion is very essential anybody in your situation would like to save himself if you are tried to help your father you would have died and any person in your situation would do the same thing and nobody can escape that situation you are not a superhero you are not a superman so that validating those emotions the situation is very essential so that the healing process starts sometime in empathy you should learn to be silent allowing silence during the emotional response is very essential don't become uncomfortable don't become agitated if you show your agitation when the patient is crying the patient feels that i am making the doctor uncomfortable he will stop crying don't do that you be calm composed let the patient take his time by ventilating his emotion and make a conducive environment to express his emotion be comfortable with the silence that's very essential a silence is also a way of communication do not say such words stop crying stop expressing your emotions don't do that even the patient's family member are telling that don't cry you tell the family members it's okay let them express his emotion we are here to know about his problems and also his emotions and what are the skills decoded to learn empathy this is a very important slide first and the foremost improve listening skills by head nodding by saying hmm yes what happened next and also understand the patient facial expression understanding the patient's body language how does his body language is there how is his eyes response those are all very essential inquiring and allowing the patient to expressing the emotion giving time when the emotion is coming out you should be able to give time having appropriate facial and body language of your is also max also matters most at the same time you should also know about the challenges with regard to empathy for example if the patient is very very circumstantial and he talks too much empathizing may be difficult such time you should learn to use closed ended questions or else multiple choice questions sometimes you should if the time is very less you should learn the art of gentle interruption that is if the patient is talking about his problems which is related to work only and is not talking about his emotion you may have to gently stop him and say i am sorry i need to interrupt you i need to cover a lot of questions in next 10 to 20 minutes or 30 minutes so that i can diagnose and help you can you tell me on that day what happened what did you feel on that day so that gentle interruption and moving forward is very essential and in certain forensic cases it's very difficult to empathize for example if a person has done a child sexual abuse or has been accused of child sexual abuse in no way any person can empathize with him or else if a person has killed his parents how can you empathize with him or you people may not be able to empathize they will become no, they become judgmental so in forensic setting non judgmental is very essential whether he has done or not that is the court will decide your job is to understand the situation under what circumstances has happened and what was the background behind it sometimes empathy should be very carefully used when the history of the patient is too good to be very classical of icd10 and dsm4 criteria the patient talks about i am hearing voices maybe he says that i am hearing three persons talking about me and it's a third person auditory hallucination and it is a verbal hallucination he is able to tell the complete definition or else the dsm criteria is telling be very careful and you should use empathy very less at the time don't ask closed ended question in such scenario if the patient is very vague whenever you want to ask certain situation questions he is moving away he is very evasive or very defensive that time also empathizing is very difficult and 
in such a scenario ask about suggestible questions and statement so that i will have a different video how to ask about suggestible questions and statement and sometimes when the patient has a treatment resistance he goes on accusing the doctors accusing various professionals you may find it very difficult to empathize be non non judgmental even though if may you may not be able to empathize sometimes if the patient is having exaggerated disability you know that he is malingering in front of you don't become angry and shout at him again you have to maintain maintain your cool and composure looking for specific medication or certificate he may have, he may say i want only methylphenidate medication i've seen patient directly coming to the, my chamber and say sir please give me methylphenidate prescription because they are desperately searching for drug to abuse because it is not available in the market or they do not have money they want a prescription so in such a scenario you have to be very careful and empathizing at that time is not going to help you you should be very clear tell them about the hospital policy and ask them to take help and also when you are doing serial msc cognitive function mmsc this empathy should be used appropriately and remember the verbal communication is essential but not so essential than the non verbal communication in verbal communication you should learn to use open ended questions how can i help you tell me more about it please explain how does this problem make you feel basically by asking open ended question you are entering into a you are opening a field for the patient to explain his problems or else by asking open ended question you are giving a canvas white canvas to paint his feelings on that that's very essential so open ended questions should be the way to start hence it is called as opening when you are opening your interview start with open ended questions closed ended questions you should very use very carefully and you should use it at the end of the your interview to know whether the person had this or not or else use it very tactfully use it for asking okay do you feel fearful if the patient says yes can you explain more about it that means the open ended questions follows the closed ended question so that's again you should use very carefully and the very essential is non verbal communication during empathy the way you dress and many studies have shown if the doctor is wearing the apron the patient empathizing uh, starts talking about his problems and skills or what we call it as he will talk about his emotions very easily or his thoughts his experiences greeting offering a chair making eye contact appropriate facial expression head nodding appropriately leaning forward slightly to know about the patient problem opening your shoulder and having a open gesture makes feel that the the doctor is listening so that the patient starts communicating his problems in the body posture of calm composure confidence is very essential the way you sit the way you use your space we call it as a space around the personality of a person how does his body language how he moves his legs hands his head nodding those are what we call it as how he is using his space how comfortable he is or whether his movements are restricted or is too exaggerated making notes during the interview how do you do that do you maintain eye contact those are the issues if you are taking notes please do take the consent from the patient or explain the patient i am going to make notes so that i don't forget you are talking about very important events of your life that you should be the statement and taking calls during the interview that as much as possible avoid it unless you are on duty and you are getting emergency call you have to interrupt and say i am going to take this emergency call it is from the emergency department and we may have to interrupt the interview because someone else needs me at this point of time the tone and tempo of speech is speech is very essential how is your tone how is your tempo whether it is authoritative whether it is very submissive so that's you have to have a confidence in your speech your reaction to patient's history feelings or behavior if the patient talks about his feelings you should not show your disgust you should not show your disapproval if you do that the patient may not tell about his problems give undivided attention and having a non judgmental posture is very essential remember this important tip during empathizing you should you need to build a rapport many a times in the first first and second or third interview the rapport may not be built all interactions may not be perfect 
you may be a perfect mental health professional but the patient is not the patient may not share his problem to you patient is very guarded patient is very suspicious the interview may not go further please understand that it is a communication between two people it is between the doctor and the patient the doctor may be open but the patient may not so you may have to have two three sessions to know about his problem to know about his emotions and his experiences be realistic with your expectation you are dealing with the person's mental health problems many a time it is very difficult to exp explain their experiences they makes they may take some time you may have to give literature for them to go back read and come back and explain their problems hence remember that communication is not always with words even with the body language you can communicate be comfortable with the silence between the doctor and patient that means you should be very comfortable if the patient starts crying or he doesn't speak for a one minute or two minute allow to express emotions do not stop the patient sometimes if you are finding particularly a patient especially is difficult to speak with or simply being there sharing the meaningful eye contact with the patient matters the most rather than walking away from that place sitting with the patient for 5 minutes even in silence and the patient does not speak telling them okay i think today you are finding it very difficult to express is it okay can we have a an appointment next week or next day so that the patient comes back prepared to talk to you so those kind of things open gesture and telling that i'm ready i'm here to help you makes matters most to the patient thank you very much for giving your valuable time stay safe